Number 10, Chargers Broncos. Okay, you're thinking these two are always rivals. They're long time rivals. But how often have they both seen star players switch sides in the same offseason? Chris Harris won a Super Bowl for the Broncos, made four Pro Bowls for them, was first team All Pro, and played nine years in Denver. It's picked up! It's Chris Harris! And now he's a Charger. Melvin Gordon has been a Charger all five years of his career, making two Pro Bowls along the way for them. Touchdown! Chargers. And now he's a Bronco. Neither guy really wanted to leave, but neither guy felt appropriately sought after by their respective squad, and we all know how that will make them feel when they step on the field against them, which will happen twice in this case. Number nine, Eagles Seahawks. They met up two times last year and the results were the same, like exactly the same. Seattle came out on top 17-9 in both games, the first time in NFL history a team has beaten an opponent twice in one season by that score. We back in the playoffs, baby, I see you! Their second 17-9 win came in the playoffs, making it sting even more than the first. Eagles fans sort of have that, if we hadn't been so injured, we'd have won attitude about it. So let's get both these teams on the field, fully equipped, and see if that's true. Number eight. Packers Niners. This old rivalry is starting to rekindle the two squads facing each other two different times last year. The 49ers took care of business both times, winning 37 to 8 in the regular season and then hanging 37 points on the pack again in their playoff win. How about a touchdown? Even though both games were easy San Fran victories, we're still looking at one team that made the Super Bowl and the other that was a game away, was 13 and 3 and has Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Rodgers is not the type of guy who seems like he'd be okay with getting beat by the same team twice, so he's going to have something extra to try and prove when he gets his third try at them in a two-year span. Number seven, Chiefs-Texans. These two played each other twice last year, the Texans winning the regular season contest. Watson has got the angle for the touchdown. The Chiefs, though, winning the more important playoff matchup between the two in what turned out to be a blowout. Don't worry about talking. We just keep dominating every play. The QB matchup makes it all the more exciting too. Deshaun Watson versus Patrick Mahomes, two of the best young signal callers in the game, going at it for the third time in their careers. And you get J.J. Watt on one side and Frank Clark on the other. It has potential for all sorts of fireworks. Number six, Jimmy Garoppolo versus the Patriots. Jimmy G returns home for the first time. Okay, Garoppolo isn't from New England, but you get the idea. This, of course, would have been so much juicier had Tom Brady stuck around, but nonetheless, it's the guy some folks thought, maybe Bill Belichick being one of them, that Garoppolo was the Patriots' future. He, of course, is now San Francisco's future after the Pats sent him across the country via a trade. It is caught there by Debo Samuel! And a refresher, Garoppolo started one game at Gillette before being traded. He won it while throwing for three TVs and no picks. The lead up to this one should be great too. Just imagine all the questions Belichick is gonna field about Jimmy G and how excited he'll be to answer them. Number five, OBJ versus the Giants. It is our number one player driven revenge game and how could it not be? Odo Beckham Jr. isn't just facing his former team for the first time, but he's doing it in New York. The media hype for this one is going to be relentless. What does OBJ have to say? What do his former teammates have to say? What does Eli have to say? What will OBJ do if he scores on his old team? It's going to be drama, 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 and everyone's going to be there to eat it up. Number four, Ravens Titans. These two met up in the playoffs, which most experts thought would result in a Ravens win, being they were 14 and two, the top seed, were rested, had the MVP of the league, and were at home. What could go wrong? Answer, Derrick Henry. Henry 50, Henry 40, Henry 30. Henry came up just short of 200 rushing yards, and the Titans D did a number on Lamar Jackson. The Titans winning with relative ease, 28 to 12. As good as the Ravens were, they specifically beefed up the middle of their defensive line this offseason to address that kind of offensive attack. Both teams are going to be as hungry as ever. Both appear to be threats in the AFC, and Baltimore is going to be looking to prove that loss was a fluke. Number three, 49ers Saints. It wasn't a playoff game, but their head-to-head -head shootout last year was most people's game of the year. Who doesn't want to see that again? The 49ers edged the Saints 48-46, to which set them up for the number one seed in the NFC and was part of the reason the Saints lost a first-round bye. The game was stacked with ridiculous plays, too, including San Fran's signature moment of the season. George killed off the sideline party! Runs by a man, stiff arms a man, still pushing out a flag! And not 
only do both teams appear to be NFC title contenders again, you also get the Emmanuel Sanders factor. He came up huge for the 49ers in that game, and now he'll be on the other sideline. Number two, Saints Vikings. Minnesota ousted New Orleans in the playoffs last year, making it two out of the last three seasons they've done so, so you know Saints fans have this game circled on their calendars. We don't need to rehash how it went down the first time. We know it was a miracle, but some might claim last year was too, because it was in New Orleans, the Saints were heavy favorites, and they were winning late when Adam Thielen made a ridiculous reception that ultimately set up the game winner. And it is caught! Touchdown! Saints fans were not happy with how that ended for a host of reasons they can tell you all about. But all of it makes this game must-see TV. And our top revenge game of 2020. Ravens Chiefs. KC beat Baltimore 33-28 in the regular season last year in week three. We really didn't fully understand what we were watching at the time, as Baltimore's dominance wasn't fully realized. But it ended up being the two best teams in the AFC, the Chiefs, showing they can jump into a track meet with anyone, anytime. He's got Harvard wide open, 50, 40 foot race! Kansas City held off a late Ravens rally, and both teams are going to be AFC favorites once again. Lamar versus Mahomes? Jackson is 0-2 in the matchup now, so he has to be itching to hang an L on his KC counterpart. This might be the modern-day Brady-Manning rivalry in its early stages of infancy.